Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Got a few things that I want to share with you this week, actually. So thanks for stopping by. Video intro complete. So on the workbench here, I have two front drive shafts. Both come out of a Chevy pickup truck. One, this longer one, come out of an automatic. This one come out of my truck, which is a manual. So the one that come out of my truck, unfortunately, is just completely wore out. There's not much I can do to fix this thing. It's beyond repair, really. Wore out in the in the yoke there as well. So I want to make this longer shaft work in my pickup. It's just a better design. Got the double joint, the cardone here, a lot smoother when it's at an angle than just your double jointed shaft like we like we had originally. Problem with this one, obviously it's too long, so we're gonna have to shorten that up and we're gonna have to rebuild this joint because it is completely wore out, at least in one universal here. But we're gonna replace them both. Hopefully we have the right joints there we'll find out so let's get started tearing this thing down these are the original u-joints that come in this thing from the factory so with a drive shaft like this it's a good idea to punch mark everything and keep it all in time just like it was from the original right from the factory because they are balanced you know if you get stuff all crazy and it'll go backwards you know it could throw this thing pretty far out of balance cause you all kinds of issues that you just could avoid it had you punch marked everything and kept it in time not the best vice. So luckily that center ball in this thing seems to be nice and tight, so hopefully we don't have to replace that. Now these joints are held in by an injected, well I think it's just plastic that's injected into the side here, it's in both sides, and it goes in and holds this cap in, and what we're going to do to get those out, there's no clips on this, so we're going to heat these until that plastic basically turns to smoke, and it'll start oozing out of all these cap ends, and then we'll have to press this as one unit and take out both joints at the same time. It's been a long time since I've done one of these. So I'm not sure what they use here, type of plastic, but it's definitely got a lot of glass fiber in it. You can just hear it crunching. Some heavy duty stuff. So I'm set up with the ball joint press here, and I'm gonna press this one, this back one, get it moving, then come over to this one and kind of move, try to move those together, just see if this works. Then, then if that doesn't, I'll come up with a way to hold this in the press and use it.
see there's the bad joint. So got it all apart, decently cleaned up. Luckily, this ball socket and seal seem to be in good shape because they didn't have this at the parts store. I was just going to replace it, but uh, I wanted to get it apart and see what it felt like, and it feels fine. Most people don't know that there is a grease fitting here to grease this ball. I mean, a lot of people don't even know there's a ball in these, but there are, and you don't want to have to replace it. Not really, right? You don't want to have to do any of this, so look at yours see if it's got a little grease fitting on it if it does buy that little grease needle and put a little shot in there save you a lot of trouble down the road if you're going to keep whatever you're driving i got to dig out the rest of this glass fiber plastic and these and then we got to remove five inches from this shaft yeah, it looks really good i mean plenty good enough to use anyway so there we go so there's that little grease fitting there, and you just use that needle to pump grease in there. It comes out the end of the ball, goes into the socket here, any excess comes out this little hole in the back. Right, just keeps this nice and lubed. Otherwise, you know, they do wear out. So let's load this thing in the lathe. What I plan to do is chuck on this end, I think. Right, and we got a center in this end so we can run the tailstock in with a live center and support this thing it's going to be hanging out there quite a bit and then I'm going to come in with a cutter and I'm going to remove this weld just try to turn that flush just so I can see where these two parts mate this and the tube this should actually have a small section that actually slides up into the uh, tube of the shaft here and I just want to cut away enough to where I can get this out that's really all and then we can shorten the pipe up and put them back together and weld it up So I don't know how well this shows up on camera, but I believe right here is our transition from the tubing to the actual uh, spline shaft there. So I believe we'll have to cut up to there, but what I'm going to do just to make sure 
is I'm just going to go ahead and park this thing back here. I know I got to remove five inches of this shaft material, so I can just go ahead and park this, and then I can see up inside of it and make sure that I'm not cutting any more of the actual spline shaft away than I have to. So I should be good to park that shaft off right there. So I changed the setup. I just did away with the tailstock center, moved this up in the chuck. This has got quite a bit of run out in this old tubing. There's no great way to, uh, to hold it. So I'm just going to part it like this. I think it'll be fine. Probably be more sturdy anyway. So that went really well. Now I can look up in there, see how deep that end is actually inserted into the tube so I don't cut it when I remove this section of tube from the spline in there. inserted in there quite a bit. Almost got it. You can see I've just got a little there that I got to peel away. I'll probably just do that with a file. So here we go. So I got all my parts prepped here, nice bevel there, so we can press this in and get a good solid weld on it. Just got to slide this together real quick. This is keyed, so it only goes in one way. Is it that way? There we go. Checking its fit. Now I cleaned all the internal splines out and a wire wheeled, or just took a wire brush and wire brushed all the goo out of the, the male splines here to make sure that you know it fits good, and it does. Nothing wrong with that. Not new, but still good. So, now I just line my punch marks back up, square up this fitting with this one. What I should have done is scribed a line on, you know, on this and on the, down the tube before I cut it. But I normally would do that, but I did not do it this time for some reason. 
So there we go. I'm just going to make sure my punch line, punch marks are lined up. Square, square up this joint with that one, and then mark it, take it over the press, and press it together. put just a little bit of heat on that maybe it'll grow make this press in nice and easy instead of forcing it there we go pressed in there so there we go, pressed together. Now I'm going to chuck this up in the lathe. I'm going to eyeball this in, make sure I don't have any, you know, major run out. Maybe tap it around a bit if I do. Um, really matters more after it's welded. But before I weld it, obviously, I want to make sure that it's as straight as I can get it. I mean, this is not a new shaft. We've got some slop in the splines, right? It's a front drive shaft for a four-wheel drive pickup truck. But we still, you know, we want it as good as we can get it. You could heat straighten it, I guess, after you weld it. So look how good that is. I'm, I'm shocked. Let's see if it's actually just the chuck. Spin it around in the jaws there just to see how much that changes the reading. I know this old chuck's not perfect, especially that much hang, hang out. Eh, what is that? About five thou? Man, that's probably, you know, it's as close as it needs to be, really. Good enough. So we gotta do some welding, and this is a pretty tough job. Welding anything and trying to keep it straight is a, you know, that's a tall order. And usually welding and straight don't go hand in hand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the TIG because I have far more control over the weld size, or the, you know, the spot weld size, and the heat input, is I'm gonna tack weld on one side, just pick a side, spot, tack weld, rotate the shaft 180 degrees, tack again to try to counteract any pulling or warpage that that first tack causes. And I'm gonna go around this thing, weld on one side, weld on the other. And until I have enough tacks on it to where I feel that it'll stay in place for my final hot run around this thing, and hopefully it stays straight. No guarantees, but the little 200 GD is what we're gonna be using. And we reviewed this thing from, it's from Weld Pro. We reviewed it six months, maybe even a year ago. It's been a great machine. I have nothing bad to say about it. So let's get this thing fired up and uh, you know, see if we can't keep it straight. So before long, we'll go over this little Well Pro 210 LCD in detail. I haven't really had a good chance to you know, go over it. And plus I wanted to get quite a bit of time on it. You know, make sure it was a good, reliable machine before I you know, mentioned it really. But so far, so good. We've been using it on the truck pretty much exclusively and you guys have seen the welds that it's done. I'm pretty impressed with it actually. Thank you. 
So I'm gonna see how straight it stayed or how crooked it got. Hopefully it stayed pretty good. I'd be amazed if it is. But hopefully it's not too bad. Not too good. Hmm. About 40 thousandths. A little more than what I'd like. Let's see if I can straighten it up a bit. went the wrong way. better. working. So we're down to 20 thousandths. Let's try it again real quick. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. I think that's good enough. That is about three or four thousandths. That is as good as I'm going to get it. Excellent. So we started out with about, probably about 45. about four maybe five right doesn't matter that's close enough so that worked out really good not really happy with the weld definitely got some porosity that I had to chase around still didn't get it all out but it should be fine I will stand behind my work and if it breaks I'll fix it for myself for free <laughs> really happy with the way this thing straightened got it from 47 thousandths probably out run out to down to about four which is perfectly fine for this. In my opinion, it is anyway. And if you have the tools to do heat straightening and you've never done it before, give it a shot. It's definitely not as hard as you think. Not an expert. Done like five parts in the last probably three years. So if that tells you anything, I don't do it often. But it's pretty much trial and error because every shaft's going to react a little different depending on its thickness and how fast you can cool it down. I like to use the coolant on the lathe simply because it's a nice, you know, steady flow of cool liquid. It seems to work pretty good. Would you please get in there? 
nice spicer U-joints. Hi, Bob. What are you doing? Hmm? You got a haircut. So with these, I just put them in one cup at a time. These, where they were held in by the epoxy, not epoxy, some sort of glass fiber reinforced plastic, are now held in by internal clips. So it changes. That's the only thing it changes, really. And just one, one cup at a time. Wipe that off a bit. There we go. Not too bad. These are not the funnest universals to change, but that is a good, nice tight joint now. There we go. Now put some grease in it. If I'd have been a smart guy, I'd have put those right on both on the same side, but it didn't. So to grease that little fitting there, or the ball that's in the center, I'm going to get you one of these grease needles. They just screw onto the end of the grease gun, eighth inch NPT. So a lot of times when that ball and socket in there gets bad, even if the joints are good, this will this will just flop around instead of you know be like like you see there. So there we go. Obviously, fast forward a little bit. I spared you the wire wheeling, priming, and painting. You guys have obviously seen that before and don't need to see it again. So quite a bit of work to get this thing 
to where it will, for one, fit in my truck, and for two, it's in good enough shape to use. So replace both the lower U-joints. I did not replace the ball and socket because it didn't need it. We cleaned everything else up, cleaned out the splines, both the male and female. I also replaced the rubber gasket here, which I just didn't show. I just cut a ring out of a piece of quarter inch thick EDPM. Pretty important, really, that that be functional because that's what seals all of the dirt and grime and everything from the road, water, whatever, out of that spline section. And you really want to keep that in good shape because that's the whole reason why this happened is because the splines on the old drive shaft were wore out and there's nothing I can really do about that. So keep it sealed up, keep it greased, and you shouldn't have any problems. We went with the spicer joints down low here that are greasable because I don't like the really, if I have an option, I always pick the, uh, the greasable type because if you run in heavy water or deep water, you run in mud, you can go in there and you can pump some grease into those joints and force any water or grit or whatever that gets in them out. And with these, you just don't, you don't have that option. So tend to last longer. They all wear out, especially if you pull heavy loads and stuff. But you know, the greasable ones for me anyway, they seem to last, you know, twice as long. So there you go. Looks pretty good. Quite a bit of work. And I am glad you know, to have it done because these are not my favorite to joints to rebuild actually. Kind of a pain. All right, guys, that's it this week. Kind of bummed. I actually had a lot more I wanted to share with you, but I just don't have time to put it in this video. But we did make good progress on this front drive shaft. Actually, we finished it, really. It's done. And I'm very confident that it'll be a hundred times better than that old one that was in here. Because before, the, it was so loose and the splines and just garbage that about, at about 45 mile an hour, 35, 45, it would shake so hard that the glove box would sometimes pop open on this thing. You knew, there's no doubt that you had the truck in four wheel drive. So hopefully now, maybe you know, this will fix that issue. You know, we'll see, but it can't, uh, it's not worse. It's not gonna be worse. So, you know, we made progress. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever, much appreciated. And I will see you next time.